name is Tom Okello, the chairperson of LO3 Town Council of Balanga. We are here with a situation that has taken long. This place has fallen into a problem of insecurity right from 1979. But our ancestors tell us that the insecurity from Karamojong started in 1954 when the Karamojong started raiding Teso. And most of these places have been the borderline between Tessa and Karamoja. It has been a situation right from 1979 when armed conflicts now became so intense in Teso, and particularly this area of Obalanga, which is at the borderline. So we have been under terrible situation of armed insecurity up to 2003, when the LRS, the Lord Resistant Army, led by Charles Tabule, invaded Teso through Obalanga sub-county and attacked the camp which was here. That day, on the 15th of June 2003, the LRS attacked this camp. They killed one of the LODUs who was in the barracks, just this barracks here, and overran them making them able to enter the center where they burnt down 105 houses with businesses and very many other properties looted and destroyed. Since that time, this place has remained traumatized without any alternative options. We have w w waited for government to come in and see how they can help people remove the trauma, but no action has been taken. We thank the, the, the NGOs who have been trying to come down to support the people, like Action Aid, Concern Worldwide, Terelepa, Socadido, Tedo, JRP, War on Want, and many other organizations that came in to support people. It was out of the efforts of the non-governmental organizations that were able, after the, in, the, 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 when the situation a bit improved in 2004, there were bones littered all around in, in, in the villages because this camp was the biggest with 40,000 people in the whole of Teso sub-region. So it was the entry and the exit point of the LRA into Teso. And that left the place permanently insecure right from the 15th of June up to around March of 2004. That is when there was some space. This place was loaded with LRA, with UPDF soldiers, and the camp, the people suffered a lot of problems. And because it was an exit and entry point, most people who were brought from other places in Teso, Soroti, Kabermaido, where were all brought, and some of them were killed here, making the whole place literally with bones. So when the, the, the situation improved and people were supposed to get back to the villages, it was not possible because people were scared about seeing the, the, the bones littered around. It was at that point when we initiated an organization called Obalanga Human Rights and Health Care Association that helps us to raise up the suffering that was here. Unfortunately, some of the leaders in Teso by that time misinformed the government and that made it to take long before government responded to the situation. Because some people informed the government that it was the people of Obalanga that had instated the rebel activity again. And yet it was the LRA that had infiltrated Teso through Obalanga. That situation gave us a lot of challenge in how to raise issues and even made government not to respond in time. We really pity those leaders and I want to say that God should forgive them. Even at that time when we tried to collect the bonds to bury, we had a lot of problems with the security leaders at that time, who some of them were bonds of Teso. Some of us were sleeping in the bushes because we were pushing to have these bonds buried together. I think what they were trying to do was to, to, to destroy the evidence. So all the bonds were buried here? I am lucky and I am happy that much as there was a lot of intimidation from government, we persevered together with the people. And people supported us to collect all the bonds 
and we buried them there. In that burial site, we have 365 people laid down there. That are from different corners of Teso. We have a situation where the helicopter gun, she bombed nine people in Alita Ngicha village. And up to now, government has never compensated. We lost very many arrows, arrow boys, to the, to, the, to the situation whose families have remained very desperate and not compensated. Here in the sub-county, this place was destroyed badly. And we are happy anyway because government rehabilitated most of the, the, the facilities. It was at that point when we, the then LOC5 councillor, Mr. Julius Ochen, in a meeting which was held in Soroti where the president was there, demanded for the president to come to Obalang. And indeed the president came to Obalang on the 23rd of August 2005. We had a president here and that was the time when he pledged for the construction of a comprehensive school in Obalang in memory of that and promised a, a technical institute in Obalanga, which has not been fulfilled. We still demand for it, and we ask government to compensate the arrows, compensate the people who were killed by helicopter gunship, and also support the families of the fallen victims. We lost 734 children to the hands of LRA, and up to now we cannot account for 40 people that were abducted by LRA. Sometimes we hear rumors that children were sold. But the government of Uganda has never come out to tell the people of Teso where these children are. The biggest trauma that has befallen the people of Teso is now when uh, Dominic Ongwen was arrested. It is indeed very traumatizing and very painful to notice that even at that point, when Ongwen was taken to ICC, Teso has been isolated from this, this scenario. To the extent that even now when the case has, be, has defeated Ongwen and there is going to be compensation, the fate of Teso is not clear. And yet our people, the fallen victims are here lying. Our children, 40 of them, cannot be accounted for. Many arrows were lost. And the destruction that took place here has never been compensated. That thing will remain in the minds of people of Teso. And we want to pray that government finds an alternative.